This video is brought to you by Squarespace, but more on that at the end of the video. Hi there, and welcome to your Pick a Card to your reading video for Taurus season. In this video, we're going to have two groups to choose from, one for the yin feminine polarity and the other for the yang masculine polarity. Do keep in mind that I'm not talking about gender here, I'm talking about the underlying energetic forces of nature playing out in all aspects of life, all of the time, and both of these energies are within you as well. You cannot have the yin without the yang, so just remember that as you listen to the readings today as they will pertain to your inner reality most definitely as well as your external reality depending on what you're inquiring about. So I would invite you to listen to both readings but you might want to start off with one by inquiring about an aspect of your life that you want more clarity over first and then after that you can head over to the other reading. I've been trying out this format since the last couple of tarot videos because I think it's just a more comprehensive overview of what we're dealing with energetically within each astrological season. So let me know if this resonates, let me know if it's helpful to get an update like this every month. With that said, it's also totally fine to be listening to these readings outside of Taurus season, of course, because energy is timeless, we're all on different timelines, and I always say that what matters most is that you felt called to click on this video. So we want to take that as a sign that you have now aligned to the messages in this video, or that they are now ready for you or relevant to your situation. So. The only thing is, you might notice more Taurus energy in these readings, but that can be guaranteed since I haven't gotten into them yet, but it's just something to keep in mind energetically speaking. Now with all of that said, let's get into a quick meditation to get centered and grounded before looking at the readings today. To begin, get into a comfortable position. Lengthen the spine, roll the shoulders back, release your lower back, and sink into your seat. When you're ready, close your eyes as you turn all of your awareness inwards. From here, let's take three deep clearing breaths. Breathe in through the nose and sigh out of the mouth. Deep breath in. And let it out. Letting go of tension in the body and arriving in this moment. Great space between the eyebrows. Soften your gaze. Lower your jaw and lower the shoulders. Just let go and free up space in your body. Relax the body. Now allow your awareness to drift down, 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 down into the heart space. A 
It's from here that we listen with our intuition. We listen for emotional resonance. For what lights us up. What empowers us. It ignites joy in us. For what instills peace and understanding. So remember to only take what resonates today as you listen to the readings and leave the other messages for others that they're meant for. These readings are meant to empower you and not take from you. Take a deep breath and let that sink in. Now when you're ready, gently open your eyes to look at the two groups before you. For group one, we have selenite. For group two, we have rose quartz. Focus on the aspect of life that you want to inquire about and soften your gaze to notice which group stands out to you. Which group is calling you? Which group do you feel drawn to? You don't have to think too hard because, of course, you're welcome to listen to both readings and both these energies are within you all the time. So simply pick one reading to get started with. Once you've chosen your reading, you can either continue watching if it's group one or go over to the timestamps below for group two. I'll see you over there. If you chose group one, selenite, then this is your reading. Hi, group one. I want to preface this reading first by saying there are a lot of noises outside. There's a rooster and I think a cow as well. I'm currently on Nusa Limbongan, which is an island, small island, really close to Bali. And um, like I mentioned, I think in the past, it's very hard to find stillness or silence here. There are just sounds everywhere. Um, but I hope that doesn't take away from this experience for you. I've also decided to keep the AC on. I tried recording earlier with it turned off and I just got way too sweaty, way too fast. <laughs> so in order to give you a proper reading, I think it's best to just sacrifice um, this slight noise. I hope that's okay with you. Now I'm going to use the Golden Universal Tarot deck to get your current energies. What are your current energies, group one? What do we need to know about your situation? Selenite. Selenite. Hmm. So I think for many of you, this pertains to work because we have the Eight of Pentacles. This is 
focusing all of your attention and energy on building a skill, building a project, just getting the nitty gritty stuff done one task at a time for the sake of the bigger picture or the end goal. So it seems like currently you're facing a lot of mm, resistance and struggle or just like simply negative mindset when it comes to work. We have the Ten of Wands, Five of Cups, and Five of Wands, which is heavy. This is a lot. First, the Ten of Wands tells me that there are a lot of burdens on your shoulders. You're feeling quite overwhelmed, like you're carrying a lot, like you're on the verge of burnout or breaking down. There's just a lot on your shoulders, a lot of demand and pressure. You could be giving this to yourself because the Five of Cups tells us that yes, there is a negative side to what you are going through, but it's because you're fixated on the negative side and it's currently a little difficult for you to see the positives but that doesn't mean the positives aren't there so this could be unnecessary pressure, stress and overwhelm that you're giving to yourself you could be pushing yourself to the uh, brink of burnout because of expectations maybe you've set for yourself within this project that you're working on or this skill that you're trying to build and grow. We also have the five of wands which to put simply is anxiety. It's feeling a lot of stress, feeling competition, like you don't have enough time or enough resources or enough support. It's like everything being pushed against each other and there's just not enough spaciousness or time to feel okay uh, and calm. So all in all, you're giving yourself a lot of pressure and this is leading to the brink of a burnout or breakdown. You're struggling to see the positives of your situation and you're feeling a lot of pressure coming at you from all angles. You're feeling competition, like there isn't enough time enough space to do what you set out to do. How can I get some more information? Hmm. So we have the Empress in reverse and the Empress is Divine Feminine Energy. This is Yin Energy and it came out in reverse. So I feel like to a certain extent, you've been rejecting your feminine side, particularly the aspects of flow, allowing creative flow to arise and subside, allowing the ebbs and flows to be as they are, and riding these waves. Um, it seems like you've been straining and forcing these waves instead, which perhaps is why you've been feeling quite... Um, incongruent with your situation because again with the five of cups it doesn't have to be this way but you've made it this way with your perspective and um, the angle that you're coming at this from so it seems like you haven't been able to fully surrender to the ebbs and flows and to allow creative flow to take its course you perhaps you've been wanting this but you've been struggling to allow it this can also be feeling a creative block so rather than coming at your situation creatively perhaps you've been using your intellect a lot rationalizing over rationalizing and trying to figure everything out with the mind which could be leading to a lot of pressure so there is a need to surrender a little bit and be more deeply steeped in presence in your sovereignty in 
being so that your creativity can come online again so that you can use your right brain instead of being so left brain heavy. Let's get some advice now. What do we need to hear for group one? You have Eight of Pentacles again, but in the Osho depiction, it's called Ordinariness. Let's read up on that. Let's see what the guidebook has to say. I really like this card. This figure walking in nature shows us that beauty can be found in the simple, ordinary things of life. We so easily take this beautiful world we live in for granted. Cleaning the house, tending the garden, cooking a meal. The most mundane tasks take on a sacred quality when they are performed with your total involvement, with love, and for their own sake, without thought of recognition or reward. You are facing a time now when this easy, natural, and utterly ordinary approach to the situations you encounter will bring far better results than any attempt on your part to be brilliant, clever, or otherwise extraordinary. Forget all about making headlines by inventing the latest widget or dazzling your friends and colleagues with your unique star quality. The special gift you have to offer now is presented best by just taking things easily and simply, one step at a time. Osho says, Sometimes it happens that you become one in some rare moment. Watch the ocean, the tremendous wildness of it, and suddenly you forget your split, you relax. Or walking in the Himalayas, seeing the virgin snow on the Himalayan peaks, suddenly a coolness surrounds you, and you need not be false, because there is no other human being to be false to. You fall together. Or listening to beautiful music, you fall together. Whenever, in whatsoever situation, you become one, a peace, a happiness, a bliss surrounds you, arises in you. You feel fulfilled. There's no need to wait for these moments. These moments can become your natural life. These extraordinary moments can become extraordinary, uh, can become ordinary moments. That is the whole effort of Zen. You can live an extraordinary life in a very ordinary life. Cutting wood, chopping wood, carrying water from the well. You can be tremendously at ease with yourself. Cleaning the floor, cooking food, washing the clothes. You can be perfectly at ease because the whole question is of you doing your action totally enjoying, delighting in it. Mm, I love this message. It's so profound and um, I really like that Osho uses the word or phrase at ease here. I feel like that's kind of what we were, what you've been struggling with is with all of these cards that came out previously You've been struggling to feel at ease in your day-to-day -day life because you've given yourself so much mental pressure and it's led up to all of this energetic overwhelm in your system. And you're being called to restore ease in your body by simply attending to the mundane tasks moment to moment and seeing the, uh, the ordinariness that can lead to a very extraordinary feeling in yourself. You don't have to be brilliant, clever right now. You don't have to go out of your way to force your situation to be any other way than it is. 
You don't have to dazzle your friends or invent something crazy at this time. If you can allow yourself to be at ease with the little things right now, moment to moment, and settle into that easefulness, creativity can come back online and things can flow a lot more smoothly from here. You might be able to um, mend this brink of burnout that you're currently feeling. You might be able to let that subside a little bit. Because like I said earlier, the Five of Cups and Five of Wands I think is coming from you not so much your external circumstances. I think you've made your situation a lot more difficult for yourself by setting mm, high expectations which you're unable to meet at this time simply because of, you know, this is just where you're at energetically and that's totally fine. Sorry, the camera got too hot and had to wait for a while for it to cool down and totally forgot what we were talking about earlier. So just going to go into the Sacred Forest Oracle now. This is actually my friend's deck that I asked to borrow because I wanted to switch things up a little bit. Let's see what we get from this deck. You have Storm Spirit Chaos, which is very close to, in my opinion, what we were reading earlier with your current energies. And then you have Enchanted Fern Grotto. Grotto, how do you say that? Refuge. I feel called to read to you what's in the guidebook for Refuge. So, okay. Magic is afoot in the Enchanted Grotto. Long rays of light stream through the forest canopy above. An abundance of ferns fill the grotto with effervescent, verdant color, and a small waterfall tinkles like crystalline chimes. You know that you're safe here. This is the time to go within. Seek and find your inner refuge. Take time for deliberation and reflection. In times of retreat, you can truly hear the voice of your soul. If you've been pushing hard or struggling to keep going, this is the time to be still and nurture your inner world. Draw nourishment from the wellspring within you. Think carefully about decisions you make at this time. If possible, put them off. Now is not a good time to make life-changing choices. Instead, take time to create a foundation for the future. Retreat and reflect on your heart's true desires. Proceed with care and deliberation as you make plans. Listen to your inner guidance. Fern grottos have a feeling of peace as you enter. Many are known to be places where magic resides, perhaps the homes of fairies and elves. Allow the energy of the sacred space to fill you. Know that you can be yourself and truly relax. The spirit of the enchanted fern grotto says, Retreat and replenish your inner resources. Now is not the time to act, but to incubate your ideas for the future. Be still. The answers are within you. Magic is all around. I love that message for you, and I think it goes hand in hand with ordinariness. Be still, sit sovereign in your own energy, reconnect with yourself creatively without forcing, straining, restore flow before you make any life-changing decisions, create a solid foundation first. So tune into your inner resources. Be still enough to see the magic all around you, the extraordinariness in the ordinariness of mundane life. Now let's get some cards for your future energies. What can we expect if you are to follow 
the advice here, group one. And if you haven't figured it out yet, we are reading for the young masculine polarity. So for many of you, this will relate to your external reality, how you choose to show up for work, for the systems, structures, and routines in your life, um, how you relate to your mind, and if you identify with being the masculine when it comes to dating and romance, then this can give you insight as to how to approach the feminine at this time. Hmm. Yeah, this is a very straightforward reading, but I think it needed to be this way so we don't overthink it. We have the uh, High Priestess, which is all about your inner voice. This is also very yin, very feminine. So you're being asked to really tune inwards, to get connected with your inner mysteries, with the things that are a little bit discombobulated right now and hard to understand. If you can find stillness within and sit in the darkness of your shadows, your inner voice will come through. So this is really about connecting with your inner voice, listening in to subconscious messages. You have the Eight of Cups with the Nine of Swords also. So the Eight of Cups is letting go, Nine of Swords is overwhelming thoughts, being completely ridden by your thoughts. So this is letting go of your thoughts, to put very simply letting go of complicating your perspective, complicating your inner reality, and getting very clear and simple about how to think and how to view your situation. So you're releasing complication, overwhelm, and restoring clarity and mental peace, mental spaciousness. Let's guess some more. What else do we need to know? Hmm. Nice. So earlier with the Sacred Forest card, Refuge, you were advised to not make any decisions yet. And I would encourage you to really follow that advice because I think the opportunity to make the right decisions will come very soon with the Knight of Cups and the Seven of Cups. So the Knight of Cups tells us that an offer is coming or that you might feel called to give an offer of your own to someone or a situation and at which point I think you're going to really have to take a pause and think carefully with your heart, of course, not too rationally because this is um, a Cups card along with the Seven of Cups, so you're going to have to go with feeling when it comes to making this decision, but do take a pause because the Knight of Cups actually takes a pause before this river that comes from a waterfall of overflowing emotions, so he pauses to think, to prepare himself for this big gesture and you're going to feel called to do the same as well when you have to choose between these seven cups. This decision might feel the opportunities that you have before you, the things that you have to choose between might feel hazy, you might feel quite dreamy like all the opportunities are viable, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to decide with total mental clarity. But the key here is you want to go with your feeling and that's where you'll get your clarity because both of these cards are Cups cards, um, which is the water element. It's about emotions. So go with what ignites uh, joy emotionally, not rationally. Let's get one more card, maybe from the Sacred Forest deck. Have unicorn purity. 
Hmm. I'm new to this deck, so I am going to read to you what this card is about. Hmm. This card can appear when you are ready to step into the innocence of a child and see the world with the eyes of wonder. Traditionally, unicorns represent purity, innocence, hope, faith, high ideals, and miracles. When you stop looking at the world through the lens of your past, you'll find how fresh and wondrous the universe truly is. The past doesn't need to define you. Know that life can begin fresh and new. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. So. When it comes to making this decision, you want to take it from a place of purity and innocence, from believing in the highest ideals, from uh, believing in miracles and having faith and hope that the, the best is possible, that what you truly desire is there if you are to give this cup or receive this cup. So make this decision with faith and hope and innocence uh, when it comes and that's really going to help you make the right decision <laughs> and that is your reading group one i hope that you found this helpful please let me know in the comments below i am sending you so much love if you would like more guidance from me, I do two new readings every single month on Patreon, one for the new moon, one for the full moon. Both are followed by Reiki activations to work with the energetics on a deeper level. So if that resonates with you, I would love to see you over there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next reading or the next video. Thank you so much for being here. Sending love. He chose group two, rose quartz, and this is your reading. Hi group two, welcome. So we're going to begin with your current energies. For that, I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot deck. What do we need to know about your current situation, group two? I guess I should start off with the Empress that's here, and it's the only major arcana so far. Group 1's reading was for the young, masculine polarity, so this is definitely for the feminine yin polarity, as we have the Empress to confirm that. And that this means that for many of you, this reading will apply to your inner reality, how you work with your subconscious, your emotions, with these subtle realms, with your spirituality, and also with your feminine side, of course, when it comes to dating, if that's what you identify with, and um, your creativity as well, your creative flow and matters of the heart and relational matters too. So we have the Page of Swords, the Queen of Cups, and the Ten of Cups. These are all very positive cards. From the Ten of Cups, I'm getting that you're feeling pretty stable and steady emotionally at this time. You feel like you have a large well of emotions available to you that you're readily able to access and play with and immerse yourself in. You're able to feel quite joyful, satisfied emotionally right now. And the Queen of Cups is sort of about that as well. Maybe the accessibility aspect of your emotions. The Queen of Cups tells us that your heart is quite open. You're able to feel a lot and feeling a lot feels good to you right now. This is encouraging a lot of exploration. The Page of Swords tells us that you're exploring new ideas, new ways of thinking and doing things. You are brainstorming, discussing, perhaps texting people. You're just like in this space of wanting to venture out and learn more and think things 
through in a different way. It's very explorative and open-hearted, this energy. And all of this is coming from an ability to be quite stable emotionally right now. You, you are feeling confident, you're able to access your emotions without losing your footing. So you're able to be emotional without it jeopardizing too much. So I really like that. This is a really positive energy. And the feminine card being here, the Empress, tells me that if this is in regards to dating because the Page of Swords can be about texting and being in the talking stages of getting to know somebody. So if this is about dating, I think, and you identify with being the feminine counterpart in your connections, I see this as you feeling quite confident right now in your femininity, in your ability to express your femininity and um, attract people naturally in a way that's authentic and organic. So you're feeling beautiful, you're feeling attractive, and um, let's get some more cards about that. If this is about career or your creative projects, I see this as feeling very, um, feeling a lot of creative flow, feeling like you're able to explore where this energy is taking you and doesn't require much effort on your part. There is a very natural flow unraveling for you at this time. Oh. I, okay, so earlier the Nine of Wands came out and I put it back into the deck without much thought. Now we have the Seven of Wands. So this is where we get into a little bit of the challenges that you're experiencing in your situation. So Seven of Wands tells me that despite being so open, secure, and stable in your emotions, feeling a free flow of creative ideas, and wanting to explore new grounds, you're mm, still mm, you're still on some level reserved and holding back. I think this is good because on higher polarity, this energy tells us that you have healthy boundaries. Your energy isn't leaky and you're very careful about what you share with others. You're protective of your ideas, of what matters the most to you, and you have a strong solar plexus, a strong core that prevents other people from jeopardizing your stability and foundation. So, I actually like seeing this for you, but you might just want to be careful to not let this get overboard. So, don't get too overprotective in a way that actually closes your heart or that makes you overthink your connections or th the circumstances that allow you to explore right now. So, it's a fine line. Um, of not being too protective but still being protective enough of your energies that you're not jeopardized when you're open-hearted. Can we get some more information on that? Okay, we have the Four of Swords and I think this is advice and it's just asking you to make sure that you're getting enough rest and me time. All of this is quite stimulating and it's heart opening. It's very free flowing. So just make sure that you're getting enough me time to regulate your nervous system so you're not getting lost in all the commotion around you and all these new things that you're trying out. Make sure you um, return to your center every now and then to remember where all of this um, joy is being emanated from. Okay, now I want to get a Osho card for advice. Hmm. You have six of wands success. 
These are all such positive cards. I am really happy to see this for you. Okay. This character is obviously on top of the world right now, and the whole world is celebrating his success with a ticker tape parade. Because of your willingness to accept the recent challenges of life, you are now, or you soon will be, enjoying a wonderful ride on the tiger of success. Welcome it, enjoy it, and share your joy with others. And remember that all bright parades have a beginning and an end. If you keep this in mind and squeeze every drop of juice out of the happiness you are experiencing right now, you'll be able to take, to take the future as it comes without regrets. But don't be tempted to try to hold on to this abundant moment or coat it in plastic so that it lasts forever. The greatest wisdom to keep in mind with all the phenomena in the parade of your life, whether they are valleys or peaks, is that this too will pass. Celebrate, yes, and keep on riding the tiger. Osho says, Watch the waves in the ocean. The higher the wave goes, the deeper is the wake that follows it. One moment you are the wave, another moment you are the hollow wake that follows. Enjoy both. Don't get addicted to one. Don't say, I would always like to be on the peak. It is not possible. Simply see the fact it is not possible. It has never happened, and it will never happen. It is simply impossible, not in the nature of things. Then what to do? Enjoy the peak while it lasts, and then enjoy the valley when it comes. What is wrong with the valley? What is wrong with being low? It is relaxation. A peak is excitement and nobody can exist continuously on excitement. Love this message. So you're currently experiencing a peak and you're being asked to celebrate and to welcome all this success, all this abundance, happiness, joy, and juice of life. Squeeze every drop of juice out of this happiness and just keep in mind that as with all things, this will come to an end. You're riding this wave, but in the next moment, there will be a wake. So when that happens, um, be sure to not lose your center. So I think the Four of Swords is about that. The Four of Swords and the Seven of Wands is remain centered in your own energy. Don't get too lost in expecting certain things from your situation or the people that you're connecting with. Make sure that your joy is being replenished from the source within and that it's not being asked out of external circumstances because um, even if that is coming to you through external circumstances, it won't last. If you are centered within, then it might. So come back to centering, come back to relaxation, and remind yourself that all peaks have a beginning and an end. All bright parades have a beginning and an end. Celebrate to the fullest and welcome the impermanence of it also. Arrive this wave. And um, this is making me think of the wheel. The wheel of fortune is about the ebbs and flows of life and the message or the advice that comes through that card beyond just good karma and bad karma is that if you are in the center of the wheel, no matter where it turns, you're unaffected. So the true message of the card is to surrender to your center to not allow the wheel to um, take you on these wild, crazy rides, but to be so centered in your awareness that regardless of, your, if, of if you're experiencing a high or a low, you experience it all the same nonetheless. 
So the wheel, I would say, is the card that is missing in the spread right now. Ooh, okay, you have the chariot, which is asking you to charge forward, to be full and embodied and immersed in your experience right now. The chariot says that there will be risks. You might be swayed from one extreme to another from time to time because you have the sphinxes here and they represent duality. So from time to time, there will be that risk of going to extremes unknowingly. But if you can remain determined and focused in your desire to live fully, immersed in life, embodied in life, then you'll get through it victoriously uh, without any regrets. So the chariot is asking you to not hold back, to be determined, and to live life in full immersion so that uh, there are no regrets in the future. Because I think a lot is happening right now. A lot of newness, at least. You're experiencing a lot of newness. Now let's get a card from the Sacred Forest Oracle. This is actually my friend's deck. And I asked to borrow it because I wanted to switch things up a little bit for us. Alright. What do we need to hear? What advice? Ooh. Wild Rose Fairy Love. Beautiful. So for some of you, I think this has to do with dating and just immersing yourself fully in the newness of getting to know somebody and being in the talking stages and you know figuring things out as they come without having too much expectation and also not being uh, leaky with your energy having proper boundaries so you're not losing yourself in the newness of these experiences or the person I'm really struggling to... F okay. Wow. Okay. There we go. Wild Rose Fairy. Love. The scent of the wild rose is heady. The perfumed fragrance swirls around you and flows directly into your heart. With each inhalation, your heart opens even wider and deeper. The soft pink color of the petals contrasts with the dark shiny leaves. Fluttering among the blossoms is a kaleidoscope of butterflies. Magic is in the air. Love is all around you. Open your heart to receive. All of life's experiences are a splendid part of a spiritual evolution toward the realization that we are all love. In matters of romance, there is healing right now. You are a sacred vessel for love to flow through you, to others, and to the universe. Healing has occurred. Healing is occurring. Healing will occur. Your angels, guides, spiritual guardians, and allies adore and cherish you. If only you could see yourself the way those in spirit see you you would know how profoundly and deeply loved and cherished and adored you are. Be open to allowing the Creator to solve your challenges in wondrous ways. Trust that everything is unfolding graciously and perfectly in your life. The opposite of fear is love. Allow fear to dissolve as love expands. The spirit of the wild rose says, you are more cherished than you can possibly know. Open your heart to receive. Love is on its way. You are, an, you are an eternal vessel for love to flow through. You are enough, just as you are. This is beautiful. So your guides are with you. Your angels, your guardians adore and cherish you. If only you could see yourself in the eyes of spirit. And it's 
asking here for you to allow the creator to solve your challenges in wondrous ways. Allow things to flow as they are. Don't get in the way of this flow. Not right now. Wherever. Allow the momentum to take you without fear, with focus and determination that you know where you're headed. And know that healing is occurring. The Four of Swords with the Queen of Cups tells us that there's a lot of healing here, a lot of heart opening, a lot of connection and seeing things in a different light that allows you to be more emotional and more mm, grateful, if that's the right word, to just be more steeped in your beingness. So there's a lot of healing that's happening through the experiences you're going through right now. And this is taking you through a spiritual evolution towards the realization of love. Beautiful. Now, let's get some cards for your future energies. These are all extremely positive cards. We have the Sun, the Emperor, and the Ace of Wands. So let's start with the Sun. The Sun wants to reassure you that everything is unfolding accordingly. You're on the right track, you're doing the right things. Now just trust. Trust, have innocence, have faith and enjoy life, enjoy the abundance and the resources that are given to you moment to moment and know that you're supported, know that you're helped. The sun rises every single day for you and there's really nothing you need to worry about when you really let that sink in, that the sun provides everything for you, it shines light onto you without a fail every single day. So simply trust and allow yourself to play with life. Be this child, play, um, renew your innocence, and allow yourself to live life with vigor, with passion, with joy. So you're on the right track, and I think for many of you, you were on the right track to meeting your divine counterpart, if you will, or getting into some sort of romantic union or partnership. So that's for dating and for love, if that's what you're inquiring about. But of course, this can also be for career or wellness, because with the emperor and empress together, this can mean an inner union harmony between your creative and intellectual side, harmony between flow and structure, harmony between the mind and body. And this is going to create space, I believe, for your kundalini to really shine through, for a creative project to sprout forth through you, for you to take action in a way that you've never done before up until this point. So you're going to feel like an open channel and um, really allow the creative life expression of existence to come through you in a very organic and natural way that, you know, gives you a sense of purpose and reason and drive and passion. So I see that for many of you, if this isn't for about love. Now I want to get one more card from the Sacred Forest. Ooh, Maple Spirit Generosity. Okay, let me read that to you. What you give out comes back to you tenfold. There are times in life to receive, and there are times to provide love, services, and items to others. This card suggests that this is a time to give with your whole heart. Give without thinking of what you will gain in return. 
By doing this, you enter into the flow of the universe, and blessings will shower upon you. Maples are thought to be a very old species of trees. They are known to withstand environmental changes and can survive and thrive in various climates. Some traditions believe that the maple lends strength and power to those around it. If you tap into the maple, you will find a sweet sap which symbolically brings sweetness into your life. The spirit of the maple says, be open to receive the bounty of the universe. At the same time, be generous with others and with yourself. A warmth of spirit radiates from you. Share from your heart and receive with an open heart and success will blossom. So share organically without thinking of what you will gain in return. Of course, this doesn't mean oversharing. This simply means sharing at the right time, at the right place, when you feel replenished enough to do so. So share organically. Share when it feels right to do so. And with that generosity, you're really going to feel the flow of the universe and blessings shower upon you. That was such a beautiful reading group too. I am so happy for you and excited for you. Know that you are divinely protected and supported. This is such an exciting time for you energetically. So just, you know, reap all the benefits, all the joy and happiness that you're experiencing. And yeah, let me know how this reading was for you. Let me know if it was helpful. If you like more guidance from me, I do two new readings on Patreon every month for the new moon and the full moon. Both are followed by Reiki activations. So if that's something that you feel called to explore, I would love to see you over there. If not, I'll see you in the previous reading or the next video. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sending love, light, and healing. And now I'm going to close this off with a message from today's sponsor. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I switched over to Squarespace over a year ago, not just for their aesthetic templates, but also because it's an all-in-one platform to successfully run your business online. But even if you don't have a business, I think Squarespace might still have something for you. If you're job hunting right now or in some sort of creative field where you had to display your work, you can showcase your work online with a professionally designed portfolio website. They have so many unique and aesthetic templates that can help you really stand out amongst competition. You can share your work directly with your audience by using Squarespace email campaigns. And with their social media tools, you can also integrate your social media accounts to your site to grow your following. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to my link squarespace.com forward slash adsmr to save 10% off of your first website or domain. Thank you so much, Squarespace, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.